Welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio with host Jennifer Hillman. The show explores and reveals the human potential through creativity. So enjoy the show to create a life you love. everyone, this is Jennifer Hellman and thank you so much for listening to Abstract Illusions Radio. Today's great guest is Kendra Levin. She is a certified life coach for writers as well as a children's book editor, teacher and writer. Since 2008, she has helped writers and other creative artists all over the world to meet their goals and connect more deeply with their work and themselves. She is a senior editor at Penguin, where she has worked for over a decade. Kendra teaches classes for everyone from media professionals to prison inmates. Today we will be talking to her about her new book, Hero Is You, Sharpening Your Focus, Conquering Your Demons, and Becoming the Writer You Were Born to Be. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'd been working with creative people for a long time. Um, I'd been a children's book editor and a, a life coach working with writers and dancers, choreographers, actors, all different kinds of artists. And I thought for a long time that I'd really like to kind of just collect uh, my thoughts and things that I learned from witnessing people's sort of adventures in the creative process and, and exercises I had developed and, and kind of put all that stuff together into one place um, into a book. But I really didn't have sort of like a unifying idea until I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who was teaching a class about the hero's journey. And um, I mean, I knew about it sort of vaguely, but I hadn't read Campbell and I just didn't really have sort of any deep background on it. And so I went and read the Hero with a Thousand Faces, and um, then I read a couple other books. I read a book called The um, Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, which is kind of like a screenwriting Bible, and um, I read a book called The Heroine's Journey by Maureen Murdoch, um, which is sort of like a, a really like feminist perspective on the hero's journey. Anyway, and I just got really compelled by the idea of um, the hero's journey being a metaphor for the creative process, because it really is such a perfect metaphor for it. Um, all the experiences that you go through when you're making art um, from, you know, kind of overcoming obstacles and how that goes, getting inspiration, just sort of all these moments that really correlated with um, the sort of hero's journey model of storytelling and with the archetypes that show up during, um, during that story. So for those who aren't overly familiar can you just go briefly over the parts of the hero journey in so that we have an idea of what people are looking at so they understand absolutely. How it yeah goes. absolutely so the hero's journey is, is really just sort of a very very broad idea of um a kind of a universal storytelling pattern that goes across cultures across um, different eras. It shows up in everything from, you know, ancient myths to Disney movies. Um, and it's basically just a hero, which could be anyone, um, sort of sets out on a quest, um, goes through a lot of trials, has to overcome a lot of obstacles, and um, but also has, you know, moments of inspiration and moments of um, really sort of becoming... A fully realized person and ultimately faces this sort of ultimate challenge that is often kind of like sums up the person's greatest fears um, and forces them to face death and they overcome it and then um, they sort of return to their community with their boon or whatever you know wonderful thing that they've gotten um, as well as with a lot of wisdom and experience that sort of changes who they are forever. Um, and that, when you mention about the death, to me that's when, for me and the artistic, being a writer, being doing graphics, doing a lot of different things within the creative fields, death is like when they give up. <laughs> <laughs> when it just gets to be overwhelming and so the energy, everything that's going on in their life, and they have to make a choice. 
so many times it is the writing giving the writer giving up their writing because they have to go to work or the artist just getting so beaten down by the friends and by um, some kind of rejection and it gets to them. There's so many different ways that can lead to that ultimate fear and the death that so many people give up their dream to be a creator in the artistic fields. Do you have suggestions, um, a few ways to kind of give them that little voice in their head other than their own saying, yes, you can do it, or any inspirational thoughts on not giving up? Because a lot of people get to that point and they, they do want to just let go. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely something that I talk about in the book. You know, the, the archetype that kind of represents that moment is called the shadow. And I think it really is kind of um, the shadow side of ourselves, you know, like that part of ourselves that wants to sabotage, sabotage us and wants to kind of pull us down and drag us under. And um, I mean, in the book, I talk about a lot of different ways to deal with this. Um, but I think one that really stood out for me when I was learning about the hero's journey is um, the idea of really kind of investigating where it comes from. So almost, you know, so like if you think about a really good story, like a really good movie or a really good book, um, the antagonist, the kind of like source of all the conflict and the evil in the story, uh, in, in a good story, has his or her own whole backstory, motivation, reasons for doing the things that they do. And to that person's mind, they're the hero. You know, they really believe that what they're doing is right and good. And so kind of applying that to your own shadow and sort of asking, really investigating and asking yourself, like, where does this impulse come from, this impulse to stop or this impulse to sort of sabotage myself? What's did this, did this come, what was the origin of it? Did this come out of a way that I was trying to help myself that just kind of got out of control or that really isn't serving me ultimately? You know, I think with a lot of coaching clients who I've worked with, um, that voice can come from uh, a parent or an adult who was in their life when they were young who would say stuff like, oh, why are you doing this? You know, you need to do, take, do things that are more serious or more important or whatever, you know, like that kind of stuff. And those people were not just trying to be jerks, you know, most right. of the time. They believed that they were helping their children or, or you know, who, the person, the artist. Um, but obviously that was not helpful. So, um, so kind of really investigating, like, where does that voice come from and what is the... Um, origin of it I think can be really helpful in taking away some of this power and it's very interesting I mean even if you look at your life overall and just look at society you can see different you can tell what people certain people are in the storyline of the hero's journey I think a lot of people right now are just almost at saying okay where did the shadow happen with like the election and everybody's mm -hmm. saying standing back and saying, okay, what just happened and how do we get through this? Yeah, I think that's really true. And it's something I've been thinking about a lot in the past few days, um, just with all of the news coming through about the election and, and the way that people are handling it. And, um, you know, I think something that can be really difficult is when you kind of think you're in one part of your journey and it turns out you're in another, you know, so... You think that you're just about to um, experience like a, a turn for the good or um, or go through something wonderful and then it turns out you're <laughs> facing the biggest obstacle that you've ever faced. Um, and I think a lot of people are sort of looking down the barrel of 
that <laughs> right now. And, um, and it's really hard. And, you know, something I've been thinking about a lot is just like, the difference between sort of the idea of resilience and the reality of it, you know, and kind of, it's pretty easy to say like, oh yeah, like it's important to be brave or to take risks or to stand up for what you believe in. Um, when you, when you are truly called upon to do it, it's pretty hard and scary. Um, but you do it, you know, and that's what being a hero really means. It doesn't necessarily mean, feeling great about doing something scary, you know, that's, that's what makes it so scary, but it's about hanging on to your core beliefs, your core values, and taking acts that defend those values. And it's, I mean, with most artists, that's what the process is for them, is that self-expression, that taking a stand and saying, I want to say this and put it out to the, to the world and saying, yes, this is me. This is who I am. This is a reflection. And one thing I've always noticed about art throughout history, it always comes back to reflect something that's going on in society or, mm-hmm. a, or an, an opinion of what's going on. And Absolutely, yeah. It, it's going to be very interesting, the art that comes out from the last few days yeah yeah and, and the and the weeks and months to come I mean you know that's we're really only at the beginning and we have no idea what's ahead of us and that uncertainty is pretty intense um but I think I think you're right that there's going to be some fascinating art that comes out of this time and you know if I if I could sort of send one message to the artists and creative people out there it would be don't stop you know like your voice matters now more than ever and what you have to say is so important and that goes for people who are um sort of you know speaking up in a journalistic way against uh the things they're upset about but um also for people who create fiction and people who create um, art that's not, you know, representational and, and not really, like, literal about what's going on. Because, like you said, any any art that is created during any time period becomes this kind of snapshot of what was going on in people's hearts and minds during that time. And I think it's so, so important for us to have that um, and for us to use art as a way to cultivate empathy in people. You know, like, to me, that's a big, big part of what art and what literature are all about is giving people an opportunity to see the world through somebody else's eyes. And, um, you know, we are clearly at this crossroads in this country where there's like a, a empathy deficit, you know? And um, I think that artists are needed now more than ever to help correct that. Correct it and, and also... Um, allow the voices of the unseen and the unheard to be seen and heard through their work. Yes. Because a lot of time the artist is representing, and I keep getting in my head about the, the street photographer who is taking shots of the protests that are going on or just, mm-hmm. you know, the homeless that are out there and all those things because down the line, people are going to look back at this and say, okay, what did we learn from that period so we don't repeat it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's some twisting of facts in some media, so Mm -hmm. the artist, the most honest about what actually is going on. Yeah, that's really true. You know, I think that we're experiencing this moment of a real... um, I mean, it's really just starting, but I think it's going to really pick up a lot of steam is like a real kind of um, uh, disaffection with the media. And I think a lot of people right now are feeling like uh, journalists who we generally trust have sort of steered us wrong. You know, to me, that is no reason to reject journalism or to, you know, kind of throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, but I think you're right that art in a lot of ways can be kind of more, um, honest, uh, you know, partly because it doesn't rely on facts. <laughs> um, so it can be, it can have that emotional truth and not really have to worry about sort of getting all the details right. Well, it's like, um, and the other thing about the media 
and not to pound the media because there's a lot of independent media outlets that are phenomenal and they're great and they're getting the facts out there and I applaud them because a lot of them put themselves in a lot of danger. Um, but a lot of the news agencies in sometimes are being manipulated and that's what people need to be aware of and really check your sources. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I think that that can happen with the big ones and with small ones. I mean, I, I just was reading the other day about um, a number of websites that were that have been kind of like posing as legitimate American news sources, um, but that are actually based out of Eastern Europe um, that have been sort of like putting forward all this like fake news. Yeah. Um, it's pretty scary. <laughs> and, I mean, you can use this also with even what's going on with Standing Rock and trying to save the river from being polluted possibly by the oil companies. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's just the same dynamics of the people are tired of not being heard. Mm-hmm. So, it, again, it'll be very interesting to see what the Native Americans produce artistically out of this yeah well and I mean I think that art has so much power to win hearts and minds so much more than often than um than journalism or well I mean not not the journalism not art but you know what I mean like um I think I just always I always go back to um you know now of course it's like very problematic and not something I want to like be endorsing, but I just always think about, just from a historical standpoint, the play Uncle Tom's Cabin, the book and the play, um, right. and how at that time uh, they just did so much for the cause of abolition, um, and there were all kinds of like preachers and going around giving speeches and tracts being published, and you know all just all different kinds of stuff happening. But it was that book that really. Um, turned the tide and it was a fictional story and again of course it like has a lot of issues in it that um, you know kind of are problematic now but at the time I mean it really helped that cause and and even with the uh, phenomena of um, Hamilton I mean it's it's kind of calling out and saying this is what the original founders of this country were looking for and this is what their struggles and yes they were flawed people but this was the foundation of this com- this this country so it's yeah. like yeah absolutely again it's art trying to get us in the language of the times which i think it's fascinating and amazing that's hip hop um that it's it's getting to the younger people because yeah because history isn't really popular with kids. This is getting them interested in it. And that's what art is so good at doing, is getting people interested in the conversation. Well, and I think one of the big reasons that it's getting people interested, and I mean, a lot of kids, but also you know, people of all ages, really, with Hamilton, is um, that it's making connections, you know, it's Definitely. taking something that's often presented in a dry way or in a way that's like, well, yeah, okay, that was then, but how is that relevant to me now? And saying, actually, it's completely relevant to you now because Hamilton's story is the story of so many people who live in America right now and are going through these experiences right now. And, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like Hamilton is really sort of like creepily prescient for what we're about to go through or, or maybe about right. to go through um, because, you know, it's about, it's about the immigrant experience and it's about um, being in a land that's really sharply divided. And um, I hope we don't <laughs> go through don't. everything that he goes through. But, we don't want know. to end this world with a duel. Um. Right, right, right. Um, but it's it's very fascinating. The timing is just so perfect. And I was actually talking with someone the other day of how many times a book or a musical or 
music even or something is almost like a premonition of something else that's going to happen. It's just, mm-hmm. like, you know, you got to wonder, you know, the universe connects with us in magical ways. And, and it's just like, hello, pay attention. So I, I think it's art to me is just such a necessity in society to keep um, the balance. So people absolutely. So absolutely. Well, you know, there's a, there's a quote that I love by the poet Ezra Pound. He said, "Artists are the antenna of the race," and I think that it's really true that artists are these kind of antennae. They like pick up stuff that's in the ether between human beings and um, kind of translate it so people can understand each other and understand the world better. Definitely, and. They know the, the right way in so many ways of finding the way that's going to touch the heart and the soul of people around them to get that message out. Absolutely. Um, so with, with the, this conversation, it's not, we're all basically on a human, a, a hero's journey right now. And, you know, are you do you want people to really this book is something really worth getting for anybody who does any kind of creating or art in any kind of genre and actually just in every day to help you figure out where you are Um, because you have exercises in this to really help you figure out those um, the different places where you may be on your journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, um, I put a lot of exercises in the book and, and some of them are very much about kind of like helping you make the art that you're making. And some of them are more of sort of like a little bit of psychological investigation. Um, but I just wanted to give people a, a real chance to get hands on. I mean, you know, I teach workshops and run retreats and stuff for writers all over the country and every time I do what people really like the most is to get really hands-on and to really have a blueprint or have a framework to be figuring stuff out so so that's why I wanted to include a lot of that stuff in there. What experience have you had as a writer and also as the editor at Penguin that really helped you say yes this is you said where you got the the inspiration but was there anything in your experience that really said this is where I I really need to get this information out now well um you know I think this is some as a project I've been working on for a long time so this it came out just last week uh in November and it's been about six years since I first kind of conceived of the idea for this book. But I feel like in a way it's really sort of been brewing even longer than that. You know, I had experiences as a writer that led me to really want to help other writers going through difficulties. Um, I, writing's always been really hard for me. It's always been like a big passion and always really challenging. And I definitely went through a lot of ups and downs with it and um when I was 20 years old I was a senior in college and a play that I wrote was produced off Broadway uh and it was uh really kind of the beginning and end of my career as a playwright um it was a a fantastic experience and amazing uh and also really um scary having my work out there really um kind of paralyzing the pressure that I put on myself after that, um, sort of, you know, of course, without meaning to, but I just felt like all this pressure to write something else and it had to be amazing and blah, blah, blah. And as a result, I actually didn't write for quite a long time. Um, after having really been very passionate about writing and really expecting to sort of have a career as a writer. And then when I did write again, I didn't tell anybody and I kind of kept it a secret for a long time. So anyway, all that by way of saying that I've kind of been through a lot of ups and downs with writing myself, and um, so that's something I really bring to people that I work with is just, like, when they go through 
difficult periods during their their creative journey. I'm like, I've been there. I know what it's like. I can empathize. Yes. And we're the time always goes way too fast, so you definitely have to come back on. But I want to make sure people know how to get in touch with you. You are on social media. And so if you could let people know what your website is, if you have any upcoming events that they might want to catch you at, and any other information you think they need to know. Sure, absolutely. So my website is KendraCoaching.com, and you can contact me by email through my site uh and you can yeah you can find me on twitter and instagram and facebook and i've actually got a whole bunch of events coming up i'm just i live in new york but i'm just about to head out to the west coast to do events in seattle oakland um santa barbara and los angeles and after that i'm going to be in atlanta uh as well um so all the events that I have coming up are listed on my website because if I list all of them, it's going to take too long. Um, but those are the cities that I'm going to be in um, between November oh, 11th and 19th. That sounds wonderful. And Kendra, really, we need to get you back on and next time I'm going to try and schedule an hour because you have so much information and such a wonderful guest and I just really have enjoyed this conversation with you. Well thank you so much Jennifer. I've really really enjoyed talking with you too. I love your questions and you know this is the kind of stuff I love to talk about just art and creativity so thank you again so so much for having me. And Again, um, check out her book, The Hero Is You. It is available in bookstores. Check it online. She has links on her website. So until then, this is Jennifer Hellman saying, with each breath of air, we hope you gain new insights, information, and imagination. Till next time, take care.